we have an always, sometimes, never. This time, we want to decide whether it's the case that if we have three vectors, x, y, and z, of the same size, if we first add x plus y and then add the result with the z, do we get the same as if adding x to the quantity y plus z? We know that real number addition is associative, and this corresponds, and so this question is actually asking, is it the case that vector addition is associative? And I suspect it is, but let's see if we can try to prove it. If we can't, then maybe we should go back and look for situations or, or vectors where this will not hold. If we're proving it, to start our proof as usual, we're going to let x, y, and z be arbitrary vectors. This means that they're of the same size, but they don't have any other kind of characteristics. That's what we mean by arbitrary. And I'm going to start with one side of this equation and show it's equal to the other. I can start with left or right. I'm used to starting with left, but if you want, you can try starting with the right and see what happens. So I'm going to start with x plus y plus z. Now notice addition is what we call binary operation. So when we're dealing with vector addition, we take two vectors, add them, and the result is another vector. So what this means is we're going to take the vectors x plus y, get a result, take that result, and then add z to that. Well, if we want to do this, we're going to have to use our knowledge about vector addition. And um, so the first thing I'm going to do is actually use notation to reveal the components of each one of these vectors, because I recall that vector addition is a component-wise um, addition. So by notation, this is actually equal to the vector with components chi 0, chi 1, and so forth, chi n minus 1, added to the vector with components psi 0, psi 1, and so forth, psi n minus 1. We're to take that result and add to it z, which has components, we'll call them zeta 0, zeta 1, out to zeta n minus 1. Now, by vector addition, this is equal to the vector with components chi 0 plus psi 0, chi 1 plus psi 1, and so forth, chi n minus 1 plus psi n minus 1, added to the z vector with components zeta 0, zeta 1, and so forth, zeta n minus 1. But again, vector addition means what we need to do is add these component-wise. So we'll take the chi 0 plus psi 0 result and add to it zeta 0. We'll take chi 1 plus psi 1, get the result, and add to it zeta 1, and so on. We'll take chi n minus 1 plus psi n minus 1, get the result, and add to it zeta n minus 1. Now, notice again, I try to show you my thinking inside these um, little brackets or arrows to the side. 
This is the style that I use to share my thinking. Other people use other styles. Um, I will try to continue with this approach. Now, what do we have? Each one of these components is just a scalar, a real number. So in order to find them, all we're really doing is real number addition. And real number addition is associative. So since real number addition is associative, what does this mean? It actually means that these components can be rewritten. The quantity chi zero plus psi zero plus zeta zero is equal to chi zero plus the quantity psi zero plus zeta zero. And this is equivalent or equal to the quantity chi one plus psi 1 plus zeta 1. And the last component is equal to chi n minus 1 plus the quantity psi n minus 1 plus zeta n minus 1. But what do we have here? We can back our way out and we can say this vector can actually be split into the vector with components chi 0, chi 1, and so forth out to chi n minus 1, which we call x, plus the component, excuse me, the vector with components psi 0 plus zeta 0, psi 1 plus zeta 1, and so forth, psi n minus 1 plus zeta n minus 1, just because of notation and vector addition again. But now what we have here is equal to the vector x plus this other vector can actually be split again. We can write it as the vector psi 0 and so forth out to psi n minus 1 plus zeta 0 out to zeta n minus 1, which we know notation-wise is just the vector we call y plus z. So what we have here is that the sum can be written as the vector x plus the quantity y plus z, again because of notation and vector addition. Oh, wait a second. Isn't that exactly what I wanted to show? So going back, I was asking the question, is it always the case that x plus y quantity plus z is x plus y, the quantity y plus z? And I think we just sh show it's always true because we started with this and by transitivity we ended up with several st steps yielding this, exactly what we wanted to prove. So what that actually tells us is something very important. It tells us that vector addition is associative.